There are few greater creative challenges than figuring out how to end a TV show in a manner that satisfies the vast majority of fans. The history of the medium is littered with series that totally screwed things up at the 11th hour. <clears throat> Looking at you, How I Met Your Mother, Game of Thrones… Because doing justice to years of audience investment is such a gargantuan, basically thankless task. And then there are those showrunners and writers who decided to do the least expected thing imaginable, using their series finale to serve up something completely wild, which if nothing else, kept fans discussing it ever since. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie for What Culture here with 10 insane TV finales nobody saw coming. Number 10. Smash Cut to Black, The Sopranos In the lead up to The Sopranos' much anticipated series finale, there really only seemed to be two probable outcomes for mobster protagonist Tony Soprano. Death or jail? But creator David Chase opted to pull the rug out by deferring to a third option that most fans didn't even appreciate existed, keeping them in the dark about Tony's fate entirely. The finale, Made in America, unforgettably ends with Tony meeting his family at a restaurant accompanied by Journey's anthemic Don't Stop Believing. But just as Tony's late arriving daughter Meadow enters the diner, Tony looks up and… The show suddenly cuts to black, with Journey's song ironically cutting out on the lyrics, Don't Stop. After a few beats, the end credits start rolling, and if you watched the show while it was originally airing, then you'll likely remember how many fans initially believed their cable boxes had shorted out at a critical moment. But no, Chase decided to end The Sopranos on a devilishly ambiguous note, leaving some fans convinced that the sudden cut to black represented Tony being shot to death, while others saw it as indicative of him simply looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life. Though initial reaction to the finale was understandably wildly polarising, its esteem has grown considerably over the last 15 plus years, many coming around to how daringly Chase subverted everything audiences expected of the show's final moments. Number 9. Claire Kill Stamper, House of Cards Unlike The Sopranos' elliptical ending, critical opinion probably isn't ever going to turn around on House of Cards' shocking yet inane damp squib of a finale. Granted, the entire final season was firmly derailed by the firing of star Kevin Spacey following sexual misconduct allegations, resulting in the show's writers hastily reworking the season to accommodate his sudden absence. But all the same, this was the best they could come up with, seriously? The final season focuses on Frank Underwood's mysterious death and his wife Claire's early days as President of the United States, leading to a flabbergasting, certifiably insane final episode. The series finale reveals that Frank was poisoned by his aide Doug Stamper who, in a twisted bout of logic fans are still trying to make sense of years later, did so to prevent him from further undermining his own legacy. Right. But that's not all though, after revealing this to Claire in the series final scene, Doug threatens her leading to Claire stabbing him and then suffocating him to death. The end. In some respects, it was appropriate that House of Cards, a once brilliant prestige gemstone for Netflix which had become increasingly silly with each passing season, saved the most absurd moments for last. But unlike The Sopranos, this is one nutty ending that forever tainted the entire series' reputation, enough that it's not talked about so much these days. Number 8. It was an autistic kid's dream, Saint Elsewhere There's perhaps no single more infamously bonkers series finale in TV history than the utterly unhinged climax to medical drama show Saint Elsewhere, which offered up a strange take on the now-tired, it-was-all-a-dream ending. The show's final scene heavily implies that the entire series was actually imagined by Dr. Donald Westfall's autistic son, Tommy, as a model replica of the hospital is shown contained within the snow globe Tommy is playing with. It's an ending so howlingly unexpected that it's well known even among those who've not seen a single episode of the series, epitomising TV shows which, for better or worse, do something totally ridiculous completely out of nowhere right at the finish line. Curiously though, the ending hasn't really tainted the show's solid reputation at all, but arguably actually enhanced it, ensuring that St. Elsewhere is still firmly remembered more than 35 years after it wrapped up. Number 7. Barry Becomes a Posthumous Hero Barry While the final season of Bill Hader's superb black comedy series Barry made it increasingly clear the show wasn't shooting for a conventional ending, 
How it ultimately wrapped up was far beyond what anyone anticipated. In the final episode, a vengeful Jean suddenly pulls a gun on hitman Barry and shoots him dead, a moment made all the more jarring by Barry's almost quizzical reaction to Jean wounding him before popping him in the head. Barry dying wasn't exactly a shock given his line of work, though. Yet, that's really just where this episode gets started. After this, we jump forward years into the future where Barry's now teenage son, John, watches a biopic about his father, a trashy, hilariously glossy affair in which Barry is portrayed as a tragic, heroic victim, while Jean is represented as the story's true monster. In the episode's final moments, John smiles, seemingly finding comfort in the truth of his father's life, while we as the audience know it to be a gross, distorted confection. While most came away from Barry's finale expecting something different, Hader evidently insisted upon skirting expectations all the way to the end, and refused to let his central characters off the hook. Number 6. It was Dr. Hartley's Dream, New Heart A rare instance of it was all a dream that didn't feel like a flaming cop-out now with the legendary 80s sitcom New Heart. The final scene in the series finale, The Last New Heart, shifts to the bedroom of Dr. Bob Hartley, the character played by Bob Newhart in his previous 70s sitcom, The Bob Newhart Show. Hartley wakes up and tells his wife Emily about a vivid dream where he was an innkeeper in a small Vermont town, effectively recounting the plot of Newhart. Indeed, it turns out the entirety of Newhart was simply a dream of Dr. Hartley's. It's a twist that could have easily bombed in lesser hands, yet the delivery is so pitch perfect, and back in the simpler times of 1990, such reveals hadn't yet become tired cliches. It's incredibly difficult not to make such an ending feel cheap or manipulative, but in the case of Newhart, it simply ensured it ended on a gut-busting, if staggeringly unpredictable, final punchline. Number 5. Asher Goes to Space, The Curse Nathan Fielder's new drama series The Curse is one of the most ingeniously provocative shows of recent years, starring Fielder and Emma Stone as Asha and Whitney, a newly married couple who host their own reality TV show. The pair's attempts to complete production on the series and also get pregnant are seemingly mired by a curse placed on Asha by a young child in the show's very first episode, which hangs over him for the remainder of the series. After a season's worth of masterfully cringeworthy episodes, the finale does something unexpected even for Fielder's off-the-wall tendencies. It breaks gravity. One morning, Whitney wakes up to find Asher floating on their bedroom ceiling, and while Asher attempts to free himself from this gravitational anomaly, Whitney goes into labor. The rest of the episode chronicles Asher's attempts to fix the situation all while Whitney is taken to hospital to give birth. Asher eventually gets outside the house and ends up floating into a tree, where after a prolonged standoff, firefighters cut the tree branch Asher is clinging to. The big shocker? Asher then flies up into the sky, disappearing from sight, and after Whitney is shown giving birth, we cut back to Asher, now straight up floating lifelessly in space. While the finale certainly leaves fans with plenty to chew over thematically, few could have anticipated that the curse's relatively grounded, ambiguous style and tone would give way to such an undeniably supernatural climax. Seriously, did anyone have Asha flies into space and enters the fetal position on their bingo card? I don't think so. Number 4. Everyone Dies – Dinosaurs When you think of ABC's legendary sitcom Dinosaurs, you're more likely to have fond memories of flannel-clad protagonist Earl, his cardigan-loving wife Fran, and their adorable dino children. You'll probably want to think a lot less about the show's final episode, which rather than pull the Life Goes On card typical of sitcoms, ventures in the total opposite direction. The finale, Changing Nature, serves as an environmentalist parable where the dinosaur species' neglect of Earth leads to their implied extinction. In an attempt to destroy an invasive creeper vine, Earl accidentally kills all plant life on the planet, and when an attempt to create clouds to bring rain goes horribly wrong, Earth is plunged into an ice age of intense cold and darkness. The show ends with Earl apologising to his family for his part in bringing about this catastrophe, while remarking that dinosaurs won't simply disappear, a hauntingly telling comment which of course suggests the dinosaur's extinction is imminent. For a sitcom, this is hella bleak, but for a sitcom aimed primarily at children, it's utterly devastating and yet offers up a genuinely educational, if traumatic, message about the destructive power of climate change. 
Number three, number six meets number one, The Prisoner. Even accepting that The Prisoner was a deeply, willfully strange TV show at the best of times, its series finale is on another plane of existence entirely. The final episode, Fallout, sees hero number six triumph over number two and request to finally meet number one, the mysterious figure said to be in charge of the village where he's been imprisoned all season long. Number six is indeed eventually brought to number one whose mask is removed to reveal a monkey mask underneath, and underneath that, a man who resembles number six himself. Chaos soon enough erupts in the village as Six initiates a violent escape, gunning down guards and driving to London, having seemingly finally escaped his imprisonment. Yet, the prisoner concluded with so much left up in the air, offering no answers for how the village came to be or what its plans were for number six. And this proved contentious enough that star Patrick McGowan, who also wrote and directed the episode, had to leave the country and go into hiding for several days as his house was overrun by disgruntled fans. Number two, another non-ending, Twin Peaks The Return. Even accepting that David Lynch has proven himself to basically hate concrete endings over the course of his career, given that Twin Peaks' original run ended on such a brutally agonizing cliffhanger, many expected that the belated third season would at least offer some measure of closure. And what a foolish, naive belief that was in retrospect. In The Return's 18th and final episode, Cooper travels back in time to try and prevent Laura Palmer's death, and while the particulars of what follow are up for debate, here's what we see. In some version of reality, Cooper and Laura, who believes herself to be called Carrie Page, visit Laura's home, which is now occupied by a new owner who has no memory of the Palmer family whatsoever. However, before the pair leave the area, Coop asks, what year is this? After which Laura's mother, Sarah, can be heard shouting her daughter's name from inside the house. At that moment, it appears that Carrie's memories as Laura come flooding back to her. She lets out a blood-curdling scream for the ages, the lights in the Palmer house go out, and the show cuts to black. While some may have been left perplexed by the non-ending the finale provides, the fact that it's kept fans talking ever since, just like the original finale back in 1991, is all the proof you need that it was the good brand of crazy. And number one, it's all about biscuits, Fargo season five. Though Fargo as a series is by no means over, it can still make this list due to the show's anthology format, with each season being a closed off standalone story. And Fargo's terrific recent fifth season took an absolutely wild off ramp in its final episode. To begin with, the denouement seems pretty typical as vile Sheriff Roy Tillman is arrested by the FBI and his troubled ex-wife Dot returns to her family. But as Dot joins her husband and daughter once again, she learns that they have a house guest, her kidnapper turned saviour, Ula Munch. The mysterious drifter reveals that he has come to restore balance by exacting a pound of flesh from Dot for the injury she gave him at the start of the series. But just when it seems like Dot might have to fight for her survival one last time, things go another way entirely. Despite his desire to settle the debt, Munch is literally and figuratively disarmed by the cordiality of Dottie and her family, who instead invite Munch to help make dinner and eat with them. In the rioters' final scene, he sits at the dinner table and reveals that he is a 500-year-old sin-eater from Wales and suffers great pain from his curse of immortality. Dot retorts by suggesting the curse can be lifted by eating a meal made with love rather than sin, at which point Munch takes a reluctant bite of a biscuit and begins to smile, having seemingly found peace at long last. For all the ways this glorious season of Fargo could have ended, did anyone think it would come down to biscuits?